Hey, I heard you're good at data storytelling. Do you have any tips? Oh yeah, super simple. First, analyze the hero's journey in 100 movies. Then learn the book Made to Stick by Heart. Oh, and you need to master stand-up comedy because if your stakeholders aren't laughing, they aren't listening. And finally, tell bedtime stories to your Excel sheet at night. It doesn't need to be this hard. After training more than 10,000 data professionals, the game framework is the fastest framework I know to learn data storytelling. It's just four simple steps. So let me show you how it works. And here's the key. Data storytelling isn't just about the story and the pretty visualization. Don't worry, we'll get to that. But first, we need the foundation. G a m the three steps that most people skip and they seem simple but if you skip them everything falls apart let's start with g before you touch any slides write down your goal but here's the mistake most people they think about what they are going to do here are some examples of ineffective goals share the insights present an update these are activities, not goals. The real goal is what happens after. It's about the action you want your audience to take. Because you're not just there to inform, you're there to get people to act. Now here's what good goals sound like. Get the marketing manager to take action to improve customer loyalty. Or convince sales to start using the new lead scoring model. Do you see the difference? Now, once you know your goal, the next step is knowing who's sitting in front of you. Many data professionals focus on what they find interesting, the data stuff. But it's not about you. It's about the people in the room, the audience. Here's what matters most. First of all, the goal, what do they want? And second, the challenge, what's blocking them? Here's an example for a marketing audience. The goal is that they want to grow revenue, but the challenge is that customer loyalty is decreasing and the team doesn't know why. And that's what your story should focus on. Not on what you know, but what they need. Still, if you can turn it into a story that sticks, nothing moves. Let's dive into the next step. Message. Write down your key message in one sentence. And if it doesn't fit on a sticky note, it's too complicated. So in our example, the message is not, we combine 12 data sets and achieve the R square of 0.83. People are not interested in that. So instead the key message is, 42% of new customers cancel because they don't see the value. This message relates directly to the challenge of our audience. And that's why it's engaging. <sighs> cool. Now we get to the fun stuff. And this last part is crucial because even if you have the right goal, if you understand your audience and you have a clear message, everything will fall apart without the next one. Expression. I'll show you three parts. Storytelling, visualization, and slides. I'm 36 years old right now, but people call me grandpa. Why? My music taste is stuck in the 70s or 60s even. And one band I love is Creedence Clearwater Revival, CCR. So here's the CCR framework for storytelling. Context, conflict, resolution. Let's have a little before and after makeover. Let's look at the before, the typical data dump. We analyzed 50,000 customers. Here are the p-values and the model predicts churn at 74% accuracy. So whew, the stakeholders are lost right now. <laughs> so how can we change this in a more interesting story, a compelling story for the marketing audience? Here's the after, the better version in a story structure. So first, the context. Customer attention has dropped for the last six months. 42% of early cancellations happen because customers don't see the value early on. We're losing 500K each week. My recommendation is to communicate the product benefits, the value to customers earlier, because that's key to increasing loyalty and revenue. Do you see how this story speaks to what the audience cares about? Their challenge, retaining customers, and their goal, growing revenue. So in the first C, context. You say why you're presenting, what's the purpose, and why they should care. Customers are leaving. Then the second C, conflict. You give the insights and make the audience care even more. In the resolution, you suggest the next step and repeat why your audience should act. If you have a specific idea for the next step, well, that's great. For example, you could say, what if we implement a new welcome email with a video that highlights how customers will benefit from our product? So that's an idea. But even if you don't have a specific idea, then always try to guide the audience to the next step because it's your job, not just share some insights and dump the data. It's your job and you become really valuable if you help them move to the next step. Guide them to a decision. Don't let your insights die in the room there. I've done that too many times. People saying, hey, that's pretty interesting, but then leaving the room and nothing happened. And to prevent that, we need visuals. 
So here are my fast data visualization tips. Please don't do this. Can you spot the mistakes? Here's what I see. There are too many colors. The message is not clear. People are asking, okay, so what? The grid lines are distracting. The title doesn't say anything. So let's clean it up. <sighs> Better, right? <laughs> Here's what we changed. We removed some clutter, the grid lines. We simplified by combining the two weeks, the average. We added some color sparingly to highlight the key message. And we used direct labels, seeing the percentage right away. There's a clear title communicating the key message. Let's have a look at this side by side. Do you see the difference? It looks so much better. The last one, slides. Let me show you the fastest way to lose the audience attention in a presentation. Uh, yeah, all right, here's the data. Um, we ran a gradient boosting model. Um, AUC came out at 0.84. <laughs> Let's do that again. Learning from this book, Presentation Zen. Let's talk about something that is hurting our business, customer churn. As you know, more and more customers have been canceling. We've been tracking this closely over the past six months and it's been steadily rising. But here's where it gets very interesting. When we dig into why customers cancel and look at how long they've been with us, we discover something surprising. 42% of customers cancel within just 14 days because they don't see the value. This tells us one thing loud and clear. We need to communicate the product's value much, much earlier. I have some ideas on potential solutions, but I would love to hear your thoughts on how we can help new customers see the value of our product so that we can increase loyalty and revenue together. So here's the principle. Slides should support you and not compete with you. So when you prepare your next presentation, follow the three second rule. Show a slide to someone for three seconds. And if they cannot tell you the main point, it's too busy. Let the slide support you and don't let them steal the spotlight. So keep it simple. No more bedtime stories for your Excel sheets. And if you give me just four more minutes, I'll help you improve your data storytelling by 44%. Watch this video next so that you become the data professional every leader wants in their team. See you there.